I'm Savannah, this is Cleaver Cooking, and today, because y'all haven't heard enough about sourdough this past year, we're gonna talk about sourdough. Specifically the starter, how to make a starter, what a starter actually is, how to get it ready to bake with, which is the big humdinger, and how to maintain it. All right, to start off with, briefly, what is a sourdough starter? When I started baking with sourdough, um, I thought that it was a type of bread in the same way that focaccia or ciabatta is a type of bread, but sourdough is actually a leavener, and so you could make a sourdough focaccia, a sourdough ciabatta. You can make almost any kind of bread sourdough by using this instead of yeast to leaven it. So, um, sourdough's a leavener. What else about it? And I think that's about all you need to know on that subject. So let's talk about making a sourdough starter. This is my active, healthy, happy sourdough starter here. We'll get more into why it's this big in a moment. All right, let's make a starter. So much stigma around starters until you know what it is, you're like, but how do I do it? Um, really, you just combine flour and water. So let's do it. So yeast likes warm things, so I'm gonna add about 80 Fahrenheit water to this jar. And we're gonna do equal parts by weight, equal parts by volume is not quite the same. So 100 grams of water. And then you can really use any kind of flour you want for your starter. I use bread flour because I got a big bucket of it right here and it's super easy. A lot of people like to use rye or whole wheat because they get that extra flavor added to the loaf. And there's a bunch of other benefits with other types of flour for the starter, but that's a lot of information for one morning. I always like to add my water first and my flour after because this way I can pick, if I go over, I can pick the flour off versus if you put the flour in and then you dump your water on there and you get too much water and you're like, oh, that's kind of screwed. Okay, so literally just mix this together. If you don't have a scale and you're doing this by volume, you are looking for a thick paste. If you ever made paper mache as a kid, you want it to be a little bit thicker than that ideal consistency for dipping those newspaper strips. Okay, this is what we're looking for. Don't it look good? Okay, there is, with very clean hands, um, good bacteria on your hands that the starter likes, so often I will, you can either mix by hand, or I'll just get a little on my fingers and then put it right back in. Get off. There we go. Um, if you're interested in getting into sourdough, I would get used to having just a cup of clean water next to you. Super helpful because what's popular these days is like a high hydration sourdough with that big open crumb, and so the dough's super duper sticky. So water for your hands is very helpful. I just need like to clean up the jar just a bit so I can kind of see what's going on. And that's all that actually should go in a sourdough starter. Some recipes have you adding yeast to it and some recipes have you adding like yogurt to it. You don't need any of that. What happens here is the water and the flour, we're gonna let this sit over about three days. And every day we're gonna scoop out most of it, leave a couple tablespoons and add another 100 grams water, 100 grams of flour, mix it up, let it sit. So what's, what it's gonna do is it's gonna capture the natural wild yeast in the air. And over the course of a few days, you're gonna to start to notice this really unpleasant smell as the fermentation begins, right? Keep feeding it. Depending on the temperature of your house, this might take anywhere from three to five days. It will eventually go from that nasty, acidic, off-putting smell to a sweet, yeasty smell. If that's a good sign that you're in business, you might wanna to move to a slightly bigger jar. So um, at that point, you just wanna feed your starter regularly because once the yeast is in here and it starts to eat through that flour, the longer you go without feeding it, the more exhausted the yeast is, the harder it's gonna to be to leaven bread. So we'll feed it regularly. And that's it, that is how to make a sourdough starter. All right, so how do you get your sourdough starter ready to bake with? Um, they say when you make a sourdough starter from scratch that it can be ready to bake with anywhere between five and seven days. And while that is technically true, I think that you are ready to bake with your sourdough starter when you understand the rise and fall of it. Think of it kind of like a goldfish, right? Get to know it a little bit. Spend just like, you know, a minute or so a day looking at it, refeeding it, noting in your mind what it's doing at what particular times. These are both exactly the same sourdough starter by weight. They were both fed at exactly the same time about eight hours ago, okay? So what's the difference? Think of a sourdough starter not only as a goldfish, but also, also as one of those weightlifters that's really jacked, right? They live at the gym. 
They rip through like four or 5,000 calories a day. They're never full, they're always hungry, but they can lift a shit ton of weight, right? So, your sourdough starter, when you are trying to use it to leaven bread, you're asking it to do a big job, right? You want that big, beautiful, open loaf. Um, if you don't feed it, think about if you didn't feed one of those like weightlifters for about four days, you think they'd be lifting very much at the gym? You wanna feed it a lot leading up to that. And as you feed it regularly, I would say feed it the three days leading up to baking, you wanna feed your starter no less than every 12 hours. It doesn't have to be 12 hours on the nose, but like, think about it. if you get up at like six o'clock, feed it at 7 a.m., feed it at 7 p.m. approximately in those times, and you're gonna to start to get really familiar with the rise and the fall of it, okay? This sourdough starter is my backup that I keep in the fridge, and so it's been in the fridge, um, which does slow the fermentation activity a little bit, but um, not enough to where the yeast isn't exhausted, right? It hasn't had food in a long, long time. So I pulled it out of the fridge last night, fed it at the same time I fed this one that's been fed every 12 hours for the last three days. And this is the difference. This yeast is, this yeast is strong enough to leaven. This yeast, while it technically could leaven bread, it wouldn't do a very good job of it. So that's the gist of it, is you just wanna get familiar with your starter, the rise and fall, feed it really frequently. Some people feed their starters, um, like every six hours, the few days leading up to it. And man, those are just like climbing out of the bucket. They do a beautiful job making those big open loaves. But you do have to discard a little bit more. So get familiar with it. Find out what works for you, what works with your schedule. Now, how do you tell when it's ready to bake with on the day that you wanna bake with it? Once you get super familiar, you don't have to do the water test. And the water test is not infallible, but it's a really good starting point if you're just getting familiar. So what I like to do is, so we get a clean cup of water here. Um, and we're just gonna pour off a little bit of our starter. Boom, super, super good float there. It's not laggy, it's right at the surface. That's a good sign that it's trapped enough of the gas bubbles with the fermentation. This is really happy and ready to leaven bread. So you can just literally take this, pop it back in. So the float test is usually accurate. However, if I were to take this, bang it down, smash all of the like air bubbles out of it. It might still float. Nope, sunk like a stone. This is still ready to leaven bread. So when you're doing the flow test, just try and make sure you haven't smashed all those air bubbles out of it because you're not gonna get an accurate result. And that's how you know it's ready. You see how this fell when I tapped it? We just redistributed the yeast. It'll zoom back up in the next hour or so again, but we could use it now to leaven bread. All right, so last thing is maintaining your sourdough starter. The more you bake with the sourdough starter, the more you feed it, the more you like use it regularly, the more success you're gonna have just because sourdough is less so of a scientific process. There are elements of that, but for me at least, it's getting to know the bread. It's kind of the language of bread, like what is it telling you? How does it work? How does it operate? And it's really learning to bake in your environment. So, um, with your starters, if you keep it on the counter, you're gonna have to feed it super regularly to keep it active and happy. But what you can also do is keep your backup in the fridge. I always have a backup of mine um, in case something, which did happen one time, I was feeding my starter again and the glass jar just broke and shattered and I had to hold, throw the whole thing out. So having a backup is a really good idea. So what you can do is just, when you're ready to feed your starter, you're gonna pour off a little bit into a separate container, mix it with flour and water, throw it in the fridge. Refeed your starter in the fridge about every month or so to keep it super happy, but you're not really gonna kill it. But yeah, the coldness of the fridge will slow the fermentation process a little bit, and instead of then having to bring that out and the yeast is so exhausted, you have to feed it and feed it and feed it, you would wanna give yourself about seven days worth of feedings before you're ready to use that to leaven bread again. What I do, since I usually have my counter starter, I will get rid, of one, get rid of the one in the fridge and just take a little piece of my healthy starter that's on the counter after I'm finished baking for that time period, mix that with more flour and water, and pop it in the fridge. It saves a couple discards. So also when I first started baking, I was really concerned about killing my sourdough starter. And one of the most helpful things that one of my baker friends told me is it's never dead. That's how you have sourdough starters that are hundreds of years old is it is so, so hard to kill. If you start to see those yellow streaks running through it, or again, there's actual mold growing on it, probably time to say goodbye. Um, but this baby is pretty much never dead. Yeast dies at 140 degrees, so it's like if you stuck your sourdough starter in the oven and baked it, yeah, it would, it would be dead. But other than that, there's not a lot you can do to kill it. Um, it will pretty much always come back. 
I've had a couple times, like one day I didn't give myself enough time for it to rise properly and I was like, okay, I'm gonna really speed it up. I'm gonna put it in a super warm environment. So I like got some heating pads and packed it all around it. And um, the starter, it didn't rise. It got weird and it got very liquidy. Uh, the same that an exhausted starter that hasn't been fed for a while would. So I took it out, took a little piece of it, fed it again with fresh flour and water and it zoomed right back up. So follow your gut on things like that. If you're mixing it and it doesn't look right or if you're trying something new and it doesn't look right, it probably isn't. Uh, but it's really just about getting to know your starter. But it's not dead, it's totally fine. One last thing, um, in the realm of do you have to hire a starter setter when you go out of town? You certainly do not. This does not need to rule your life. So, yeast is a bacteria, right? Bacteria likes moisture. So this ratio of equal parts flour and water is a really easy ratio for the yeast to eat through all of that food, and all of the flour. So let's say you're, you don't wanna bake with your starter for a month or you're going out of town for a while. What you can do is just take a little piece of your starter this will keep you from having to feed it super regularly either. Little piece. And then we're literally just gonna add some flour to it. No water. Dry it out a little bit and make kind of a stiff dough ball here. The super high ratio of flour and the lack of moisture, this is certainly still alive, right? But it's gonna take this yeast a long, long time to work its way through all of this flour. So you could keep this in here for weeks, like this. And when you're ready to use it again, just take your little dough ball, maybe pinch off half of this, mix it with 100 grams of water, 100 grams of flour, do that for about five to seven days, and it'll be right back to zooming up and down and ready to leaven bread with. All right, there is so much to know. Um, but that's the gist of it, in my mind anyway. That's what worked for me and got me to a good place with my starter. 90% of the problems you have if your baking sourdough bread and it's not coming out the way you want, come back to your starter. Even if you think you know it, I got to a place where I was like, yeah, I totally got it. I know what's up with the sourdough starter. I'm still having this problem, but it's not the starter. And guess what? It was still definitely the starter. So if you're having problems baking, come back to your sourdough starter. Feed it, feed it, feed it. Get it really healthy, really active. Watch it. Create a little journal if you want to get super into it. Totally up to you. Uh, sourdough baking is very personal and you can make it your own. You can make these huge, big, beautiful loaves and cross your T's and dot your I's, or you can just make some bread. It'll be totally cool. All right, y'all, that is all I've got for you today. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below for me. You might have noticed the industrial equipment that started to close in around me these last few shoots, except for that oven. That's a piece of shit. There's a better one on the way. We started our own sourdough cottage bakery during the pandemic. It's called Capona, C-A-U-P-O-N-A. -A. It's going very well, I am happy to report. And we are launching a food truck this spring with smoked meats on the sourdough bread. Link is below the video to check out Capona, so give us a follow over there. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe. Also tune in next week or whenever, two weeks, Lord knows. Tune in the next time, we're gonna do a video on the sourdough loaf we make for Capona. That'd be super fun. <laughs>